Okay, now we're going to move on to figures. And figures, obviously, is another huge topic, right? And I'm going to have another video to help you to see how to make figures professionally and really look good for your research, especially models and theories and ideas like that. But when it comes to putting figures inside your thesis or inside your research paper, things are a little bit unclear because there's so many kinds of figures, right? There's pictures, there's video capture frames, there's x-ray images, there's models, uh, theoretical const constructs, all these kinds of things. A figure could basically be anything, couldn't it? You could have children's drawings. You were experimenting with children's ideas. They have drawings, you put them in. So there's no one way to do a figure. But there are some basic rules we can look at from the APA and MLA to help us get an idea how to do this. Of course, figures can be graphs, charts, maps, drawings, photographs, video captures, it can be anything. Here's a very typical example of a figure. This figure would be typical for psychological research, it's very normal for business research, consumer studies, education studies. And what we have are structural equation models here. And we basically are looking at the different um, variables and how they relate to each other in this structural equation model. Okay, that's great. So you can see that it's a little bit complicated, right? Well, whatever. How you do this and what your research is about, of course, is specific to your research. But I draw your attention here to the note down here. Well, first of all, we have the, the, the caption, figure, and then we have the caption. Now, it's not the same as a title. Here, we're just showing the caption. And then down here, we have all of this other information, which are the notes to it. And you can see lots and lots of it. Why? Because we're saving space by using these abbreviations, G, V, V, I, V, T. What do these all mean? You explain it down in the note. Okay, for figures, there are a few things you can try to pay attention to. The figures should not repeat what's in your text, but rather it should augment it, add something to it, make it easier to understand. So a picture is a way, what do they say, a picture is worth a thousand words? That's a key point. Your picture says something that you really cannot say inside the text. So don't draw a picture and then explain it all in the text. Refer to the picture as a way to help me understand what you're trying to say. The picture should have some key points to it, essential facts. It tries to not to be distracting. It should be easy to kind of get the idea quickly. It should be easy to read the, the numbers or words on it, which is not easy to do. It seems like, hey, that should be easy, but it can be very hard to make a graphic easy to read all of the words and numbers. It should be consistent, of course. If you make more than one figure, try to do it the same way every time. And you need to really carefully plan it. It's not an easy thing to do. It sounds easy, but it's not easy. Lines need to be smooth and sharp. And you need to keep your typeface, that is the fonts, you need to keep them very simple, very straightforward, easy to understand. I always have a certain kind of style I use. I always use Arial font. I always have lines be a certain thickness and arrows be a certain size and type, so I don't need to repeat doing this every time. Inside your thesis, of course, all of your figures should follow the same kind of ideas, the same kind of design. Make sure that all the elements inside the figure are clearly labeled and explained. Now, here's some examples. I guess the best way to understand figures is just to jump into examples. Now, here is figure two, virtual world group review and students negotiating inside the virtual world. So it's two screen captures from a research project. And you can see the screen capture is of a virtual space where people are, these are their avatars, their virtual uh, you, uh, people inside the virtual world. So what is so helpful about this picture? Well, this picture in my research helped me to explain what we were doing inside this experiment. We were giving students a chance to have class inside this virtual world. Now I can try to explain that by saying what? By saying virtual world, by saying computer world, by saying inside the network. But how can I explain that? Clearly not easy. A picture is worth a thousand words and this is a perfect example of a figure. 
Here are actual photographs. And of course, when you publish, you often are limited to black and white and not color inside of uh, research publications. So this is a black and white photo. You have to get it ready beforehand. You have to make sure that the um, depth of the grayscale is suitable for the journal. And in this case, we have a couple supermarket shops, uh, sh uh, shots. This is a supermarket and this is a fresh market in Taiwan or China. And here we, oh, it's in Taiwan. And here's figure one, RT Mart's wet market metaphor. And this is an actual example from a journal I've published in. And you can see that in this journal, their rule is to say figure one with no period here. That's this journal's rule. And then to have the caption here with no period here also. That's the journal's rule. And again, you need to follow the rules of your journal that you're sending to or of your school or your department or your professor. It can be a little bit different for each one. And here we have another example. This is a video. I want to have a video, but I can't put a video inside of a paper, can I? So this is a screen capture of the video. And then here it's listed as video. It's not figure. Why? Because it's not a figure. It's a video. Of course, this is not a video. So here is the link to where the reader can find the video. So it represents the video. So that's another example of a figure. It can be something a little bit different, like a video. And here's a very creative figure. So this is actually a drawing and it's a little bit abstract, a little bit interesting. These are ships on an ocean. But what does this mean? This is a way to help the user understand the results of the research. So this is a paper I wrote with uh, a couple other researchers. And what we're doing is we're trying to show an idea. And the idea is about international trade and about international marketing and culture in different countries. And we're trying to represent our conclusion by saying the finding is like this. It's like a boat on the ocean heading towards the target market. And here is a little table that's inside my figure. And this table has some abbreviations like GCC and G and LCC. And what do these mean? Well, we could put them down in a note, couldn't we? If we use a note in a, in a table, that would be suitable. But you know what? In a figure, you can go ahead and put your notes actually right inside the figure if you want to, to make it easy to understand. So here I have a kind of key. What does all of this mean? Right here is a note right inside of here. And here is an explanation of what is, my, what is it I'm trying to explain here. So the user can quickly look at the picture and see the ideas all inside the figure. And then outside the figure is the caption here, which is figure seven, and then the caption of the figure. Now that's a pretty crazy one. This is probably the craziest figure I've ever made, but it's not that unusual. We made it kind of look simple and abstract, kind of like a child's drawing, because we're trying to explain this is easy. This idea is easy to understand. A child can understand this with this simple drawing. In your research, you could use something like this, or you may use something that's more like a theoretical model. Or if you're doing biological research, agricultural research, you'd probably be using some kind of photograph from a microscope or from an electron microscope or something like that. In any case, the point is to make it easy to quickly look at it and see what's my main point. And I can read your discussion inside the end of the paper at the conclusion, and I can say, hey, let me look here quickly and I can see your main point again. So that's a great way to use a figure. So we're gonna wrap it up on the tables and figures for this part on this crazy one right here. And again, it seems like a lot of rules, but the best way to understand this is to get your hands on a journal and follow exactly what they've done or to find examples of published articles rather than just ask your friends, hey, how do you do this? What do you think? Well, copy somebody's example and just put it in there. That's really not going to work too good. The best thing you can do is get the APA manual and follow its guidelines exactly. It's a little bit tedious, though, I have to say. Okay, then. See you next time.